Hey guys, my name is Steve McCullough and I'm in charge of public relations at the Apollo Foundation. We've had an amazing amount of growth in the Apollo community over the course of the last week. And with that growth, we've received a lot of questions. We decided the best and the most personal way to answer these questions would be to publish an FAQ video that answered as many as we could. If you have any questions to add to the next video, please don't hesitate to email us at info at apollocurrency.com. Definitely do not hesitate to reach out. We appreciate all comments and questions. All right, so our first question is probably the most common and it's definitely the most basic. What is Apollo? I'll start this question off by telling you what Apollo isn't. Apollo is not just another ER20 token like you find in every other ICO out there. We've had a lot of people ask, why can't I send Apollo with my Ether model? Well, there's a good reason for that. Apollo is a unique cryptocurrency with its own blockchain. We're not based off of Ethereum, we're a direct competitor of Ethereum. We came up with the idea for Apollo after spending a lot of time using a bunch of different currencies for many different things. We decided it was time to create a currency that could offer everything in one blockchain. So with that vision, we set off in developing Apollo. Our goal with Apollo is to create a currency that can be used privately in every country on Earth while offering its user every feature needed in a cryptocurrency. It may seem as though every nation already has private crypto options, but that is far from the truth. China, for instance, illegalized cryptocurrencies and using what is referred to as the Great Firewall has done a great job of keeping good options from being used. It is this firewall that blocks the use of Tor, which is critical for hiding your IP address. Without it, your physical location is vulnerable, making its use dangerous. We have already solved this issue by implementing a customized version of Tor, which hides information in SSL packets. We intend on being the first real privacy options for nations like China and the first all-in-one currency to offer all essential features on one platform. We hate jumping from currency to currency, so we're trying to make that a thing of the past. So our next question is, why did you base Apollo off of NXT? Well, essentially, we set out with a goal, and that goal was to create the best all-in-one privacy currency. We spent months researching every option, looking at every possible way we could make this a reality in both the safest and the fastest ways. We chose NXT because it was based off of years of development and had a lot of what we wanted to incorporate. At the same time, it possessed the infrastructure we needed to develop our additions, such as Olympus Protocol, Hermes blockchain and smart contracts. Our mentality is that we want the absolute best end result. We don't care how we get there as long as we end up with the fastest, most advanced, and most feature-rich currency available. It is also important to remember that almost every cryptocurrency has started out as a fork or a copy of another cryptocurrency. Sometimes even a fork of a fork. That's the beauty of open source. We can create something bigger and better by starting where someone else left off. Once we finish Olympus Protocol and the Hermes upgrade, there will be little left of our NXT base, but it's a great means to get where we need to go. So our next question is fairly common. Uh, you guys don't look like other ICOs. Why is that? Well, there's a pretty good reason for this, and that's because we aren't an ICO. We aren't a company offering an ER20 token, which was printed instantly to raise money for a project that hasn't been started yet. In fact, we aren't a company at all. Apollo doesn't represent a share or security or anything else. So the main reason we aren't set up like an ICO is because we aren't one. We created Apollo as a community-based project with the goal of developing the first all-in-one currency. As such, our coin distribution event has one goal in mind, and that is to distribute Apollo into as many hands as possible. So the next question is, where are you guys located? Although we are working to place several offices, within the US and Europe. Most of the current team is quite separated geographically. So during the coin distribution event, we are focusing all of our resources on promoting and developing Apollo. Once this event is finished, we will work to expand our team even further. 
and established offices and local teams specialize in business relations and marketing in many strategic locations. So the last question is, will the Apollo Foundation put an emphasis on transparency? Essentially, the Apollo Foundation had two routes to choose from in terms of transparency. If you look at the current landscape for privacy coins, you will see that nearly all of them use pseudonyms in place of their real names and illustrations of themselves instead of actual pictures, essentially hiding their identities from not only authorities but also investors. We chose to change this trend by adopting an open book policy, therefore exposing our names and public information. With our goal being an unregulatable coin, there is certainly some vulnerability in this, but we decided the need for clarity and transparency was paramount to even our own security. That's it for now, but if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to email info at apollocurrency.com.